Hi, Patrick Gavin Politico. It is now time to turn the table with Chris Wallace, host of Fox News Sunday. Uh, Chris, a pretty interesting press conference from the president uh, yesterday. I was sort of watching it also on Twitter, and a lot of folks kind of chimed in that it almost seemed like a therapy session for the president. A lot of apologies, a lot of falling on his sword. Uh, what was your reaction when you watched the president yesterday? Well, look, I, I, you know, it went on and on and right. on. And, you know, some people were questioning why. I think that the uh, advisors, maybe the president himself, decided, look, people are ticked off at, at you. They're, they're, they're ticked off at what they see as a, some would call it a misleading statement. Some would call it a lie. Uh, and, and just go in there and take your turn in the barrel. Just, just get beat up and, you know, no matter how, basically have people get sick of, the, of you uh, uh, having to apologize. So I think that was the feeling. It was a way to kind of let the steam out. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily solve any of the problems. It solves some political problems because the president will be able to say, well, look, I heard what you said and here's how I'm responding. We'll see uh, from his meeting with insurance companies whether it solves the real substantive problem because the immediate reaction from insurance companies and commissioners was you can't just uncancel cancel policies uh, you know, in, in November, uh, that this has all been built as a complicated structure. There are contracts with providers. Uh, the, their whole setting of premiums for the Obamacare markets are based on an assessment, their understanding of how many young, healthy people would sign up if they don't sign up for that, but they sign up uh, for the individual market. Uh, that changes the whole risk pool analysis. So, so we'll see how much substantive effect it has, but it, it may you know, it may not shift the cost, it may shift the blame to the insurance companies. You know, in political terms, I mean, he even admitted himself that he was probably too late in apologizing, that he was uh, perhaps not as forthright in sort of explaining the way the system would work, and also not anticipating how difficult it is to get the federal government to act in a way such like Amazon.com when it comes to websites. So in political terms, was this apology about the right time for it, or, or are people sort of thinking that this took way too long for the president to come out and sort of fall on his sword like a lot Listen, of people thought? I mean, I mean, you know, with 2020 hindsight, he, it, he shouldn't have had to apologize. He should have been much more upfront with people beforehand. Obviously, you would think if something had your name on it, if it was called Gavin Care, that you would be all over the question as to whether or not when you say it's going to be great and it's going to start on October 1st, it was going to start. I mean, it, it's, I still find it. He said, well, I wasn't as aware as I should have been. Why not? I, I, and he didn't give a good answer to that. Why wouldn't you know when the, all the tests were indicating this was a disaster waiting to happen, why wouldn't you know beforehand that this website was not going to roll out the way you had promised it, it would? And in addition, you know, again, everybody who knew this, I must say I didn't, but people who were experts in this knew that there were going to be uh, uh, millions of cancellations. In fact, that was the whole way the program was designed. Why wasn't the president more upfront about that? I can, to some degree on a practical level, understand why uh, he, he wasn't before the election because it was, you know, in, it was information that was going to hurt him. And, you know, maybe you need to get through the election. But boy, wouldn't you think between uh, early November of last year and early November of this year, at some point you would have said, oh, by the way, there are going to be cancellations here, so you better be prepared right. for it. Well, switching gears uh, quite a bit, we obviously have the 50th anniversary of JFK's assassination coming up this week. You'll be talking about it on your show. You know, we actually did a piece recently talking about, and I think by my count, there were about 130 books coming out in the past couple months. We've got TV shows, movies, iPhone apps about it. Um, on the one hand, you, you might be able to say, well, it's, it could be overkill, but obviously it's a reflection of the fact that even 50 years later, that moment, that president still fascinates us. Uh, when you look back on, on this particular milestone, what does the assassination mean in the grand scheme of American history for you? Boy, well, first of all, you know, as opposed to an increasing and a distressing number of people today, I'm old enough to actually remember it. I was 16 years old. I was in high school. I just been in a class and I came out and somebody said the president's been shot and I remember thinking what an awful joke it was and of course like most people then I ran to a TV and was glued there all weekend and and you know I, I have thought about it a lot in recent days we're interviewing uh, Patrick Kennedy and Kathleen Kennedy Townsend a niece and nephew of the president uh, about their memories of him the the family's reaction to it uh, and also their view of, of what a role it played in history. You know, I, I just think it, it, it's one of those extraordinary turning points. When you look back, and, and I don't know that I realized this all at the time, but the 50s uh, and, and the early 60s were a time of, of relatively speaking, such stability. 
uh, the Eisenhower era, peace and prosperity. Yes, there was the Cold War. And yes, we worried about nuclear missiles and stuff. But basically, we all felt pretty safe and we all felt the world was, was pretty orderly. Uh, and after that, in very quick succession, you had uh, race riots and more assassinations, including of another Kennedy. You had Vietnam, you had Watergate. And it, it, it just feels like the point at which the world turned and our place in the world no longer seems so secure. Uh, we no longer seem so innocent. Uh, and I don't know that we've ever recovered from it. Uh, it's certainly a question uh, that I'm going to talk to Kathleen Kennedy Townsend and Patrick Kennedy about. But I, I think it really is as big a deal as people are making it. And, and then the other thing is just that Jack Kennedy, a half a century later, continues to fascinate. Uh, you know, you look at the video of him now, and he was just an impossibly charismatic and glamorous figure. Uh, perhaps the image outweighed the actual accomplishments, but uh, you know, as I talk to my kids about it, I say, you know, it really was a big deal, and it really was a time of enormous hope, and, uh, and, and, and also of innocence, and it's something we've never recaptured. Well, I'm curious, too, I mean, what role, if any, uh, do the conspiracy theories play in the fact that we are still so fascinated about that day? Because there's this weird, uh, there's this weird dilemma between the fact that there is no conspiracy theory that's uh, earned mainstream credibility or acceptance. On the other hand, the Warren Commission still, I think by recent polls, doesn't also have mainstream Except I'm curious what role, especially as we approach the, that tragic day, the fact that I think a lot of Americans probably don't have a full grasp or a, a satisfying enough grasp on exactly what took place that day. Well, that's certainly part of it. You know, I mean, in addition to everything I just talked about, the, the change in the world, the glamour of the Kennedys, yeah. it's a murder mystery a half a century later and continues to be a murder mystery. And, you know, I saw a, a soundbite of, uh, of John Kerry, the you know, obviously right. uh, the, the former senator from Massachusetts, now the secretary of state, saying he doesn't believe the Warren Commission. So, I mean, it's not just uh, nutcakes. There are a lot of very credible people who still question whether Lee Harvey Oswald did this all by himself on his own. It's certainly a question I'm going to ask uh, Kathleen and Patrick Kennedy on Sunday, whether they believe in the lone gunman theory. But, but of course, that adds to it. it you know, it, it, in addition to everything else, uh, it's a mi mystery. All right, Chris, we'll be talking about the Kennedy assassination. Tell us about what else we can see on Fox News Sunday this Sunday. Well, we're going to be all over Obamacare, of course. That's the big news story this week. Uh, we hope to talk to some top officials in the insurance industry about that. Uh, and we're going to have an exclusive interview, the first Sunday show interview with Liz Cheney, uh, who is running in a very controversial campaign against the incumbent Republican senator in Wyoming, Mike Enzi, charges of carpetbagger, uh, you know, entitlement, uh, will, but on the other hand, also a new generation, uh, and that NZ is to get along and go along. So we'll talk with Liz Cheney about that as well. All right, Chris Wallace with Fox News Sunday. Thanks a lot for joining us. You bet. Thank you, Patrick.